lift my head you 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 lift my head you
was lost in the darkness Searching for something, searching for something To be the love I was missing But there was nothing, but there was nothing And there in my searching, running in circles And still feeling empty inside You show me the love I was longing for all of my life And I just want to tell you You're perfect in all your ways You captivate me No one else can satisfy me Like you do, oh God
Let's give the Lord praise in the house tonight. Jesus brought me out. Jesus brought me out. Where he brought me from, I ain't looking back. I don't plan to go back. I don't plan to back up. Come on now. I don't plan to back up. I don't plan to look back. There is no reason to head back. When Jesus sets us on our way, there is one direction to go, and that is forward in the ways of Jesus without looking back in the rearview mirror. We say, Jesus brought me out. That was then, and this is now. Come on now. Oh, my gracious. This is the first night of revival. We're still sound asleep. There was a time that on a Saturday night, you wouldn't have caught me here. You'd have caught me somewhere else, and I'd have been shouting, and I'd have been, believe it or not, trying to move. I don't move very well, but I'd have been trying. That's where I found her at. But you know, that was then. That was then. And when I say Jesus picked me up and turned me around, now I'm on my way. I haven't gotten there yet, but that doesn't mean I'm giving up. I haven't arrived yet, but guess what? Every day as I take one step after the next step, I'm getting to where Jesus is taking me. He didn't bring us out of the pit so we could stand around and watch what other people were doing. He didn't bring us out of the pit so we could sit in this nice, nice, gushy sanctuary and listen to pretty music. He didn't bring us out of the pit so we could sit here and listen to one of the greatest evangelists we have. He didn't bring us out of the pit just so we could enjoy and sit back. He brought us out of the pit so we could go on our way, so that we could bring our families, so that we could bring our loved ones, so that we would worship him. My gracious, so that we can worship him, worship him, the King of Kings. Father, we welcome you into this place tonight. Lord, we recognize that there's nothing that can separate us from your love, neither height nor depth, nor principalities nor powers. Father, there is nothing that can separate us from you. And we rejoice, Lord God, that you have raised us up out of the pit. We thank you, Lord God. Your word says that you have ordered the steps of the righteous men and women. You have ordered the steps that we are to take. And Lord God, as we go on the way that you have set before us, we cry out to you that you would empower us once again with your Holy Spirit, that we would be a strong any vibrant people. Lord God, that your church would rise up, that we would storm the gates of hell, that we would take the territory that you have already promised us. And Lord, as we worship you this night, that you would inhabit the praises of your people. As we worship you tonight, Lord God, that you would speak through your servant the words that you have sent from your throne on high. Empower him, Lord God, with strength. Empower him, Lord God, so that the truth that you would have for us would flow from him. And Lord God, we recognize that you are the King of kings, and you are the mighty Lord of lords, and we worship you, and we praise you. And now that we have invited God into this house, I'm so thankful to welcome each of you into this place as we continue to worship. I'm excited for what the Lord will do. Amen? Amen. After 21 days of praying and seeking God's face, I'm excited for what he's going to do. Amen? Amen? Some of y'all need to tell your face you're excited about what he's going to do. Come on, say self. Self, come on. I'm excited about what Jesus is going to do. Amen? Let's continue to worship tonight.
church so I've been in church my whole life and I've been to uh, 1017 revivals since last Christmas and one of the things that we were confused about when I was a child was what revival was all about thought revival was for the drunk guy who always stumbled past our church and that was the week that he was gonna actually come in the building and then everything would just go crazy but revival is not for the world. Revival is for the church. And so what we're asking God to do is to revive us, to bring us back to our first love, to stir us the way he stirred us when he called us from that lost place. And so today we stand not saying, Lord, save the lost, even though we say that all the time, because that's important. But we're saying, Lord, stir me. Amen? And so over these next four services, can I just encourage you to press in and ask 
God to revive you. Because if he revives you and you and you and you, you and me, we'll all be revived. And then the world doesn't stand a chance against the power of God. Amen? And so in this place today, Lord, we give you glory because we know who you are. We lift our voices in worship because we recognize that you are the God who has redeemed us, who has saved us, who has brought us out of darkness into your marvelous, marvelous light. And so tonight, God, we pray that you will revive us, that you will stir in us a passion to seek after you with our whole hearts and to follow after your purposes in this earth, that you will be glorified in us. And so we declare now that this place on which we stand is holy ground. It's holy because you are here. And we surrender ourselves and our hearts and our minds to you. To do in us and through us what only you can do. You are the worthy Lord. You are the holy God. And we give you praise and give you honor. Lord, you are good and you are worthy to be praised. To you now be all honor and all glory. Jesus, matchless name we pray. Amen. As we wait, seek your face. Come and make your throne upon our praise. Here in this place, have your way. That we see you, we are changed. Show us your glory, show us your glory. In wonder and surrender, we fall down. Show us your glory, show us your glory. Let every burning God be holy. Ground. 
recognize who you are. We glorify you, God, for you are great and greatly to be praised. Worthy above all gods of the glory that we bring in this place. We stand in your presence only because of your goodness to us. We don't deserve to be in your presence, but you are a good God. And we bless your matchless name. In this house, you are King of kings. And you are Lord of lords. And we reverence you in this place. Our prayer today, Lord, is that your kingdom will come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven to the glory of Christ our Lord. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, Amen. Before you see them, would you greet someone around to let them know that you're glad to see them in God's house today? are sensitive to the Holy Spirit and that you're ready for him to speak into your lives tonight. I'm so thankful for the past 21 days as pastor. I look forward to those seasons where we remind ourselves of the things that are very important to us. Things like a move of God in our lives. And uh, for 21 days, we've been praying and seeking the face of the Lord and uh, at midnight tonight, if you want to stay up and eat a bowl of ice cream or if you want to get a piece of cake, whatever you want to do, wake up in the morning and eat you a sausage biscuit, you go for it. Uh, it's been a good 21 days. And we've been believing God for some miracles. I don't know <clears throat> how many of these needs have been met yet, but this box is full of your needs, your family, your, your children, your sons and your daughters. And I want to ask you to do me a favor over the next year when you re realize or remember that you put a prayer request in this box. When God comes through, you notice I didn't say if God comes through. I said when God answered your prayer. If you would let us know, we're going to hang on to these as a, a way of celebrating God's goodness and his miracle working power in our lives. And so when it happens, just call the office and say, hey, I put a prayer request in that box. I got the job today. Or call us and say, hey, I put a prayer request in that box. Uh, my son, the prodigal son, he was saved this weekend. And when it happens and that diagnosis that said it was terminal, you call us and you let us know that the, the diagnosis said it was over, but God said there's another chapter yet to be written in my life. So I'm encouraging you to, to give us opportunity to celebrate with you what the Lord has done in your life. And I encourage you also to send us an email or let us know what the Lord's been speaking to you about these 21 days. I believe he has spoken to each of us individually as well as corporately on Sundays of what he's been doing in our lives. So send an email. You can go on our website, click the email link there and shoot us a note. God's been speaking to me and just let us know. Uh, we want to share your testimony with you and uh, rejoice in what God's speaking to you into your life. I want to say special thanks to Pastor Mike and his team, the prayer team that's led the 21-day initiative and uh, has been so faithful to be here and committed every night. I want to say thanks to my council and those who have uh, led us each night at the end of every service. I want to give thanks to you for being here and leading us as well. And I want to give thanks to the choir. Thank you for showing up tonight. You look great. Thank you for leading, leading us in worship. I'm glad you're here, and your presence means a lot to me. As we prepare for tonight, it's an honor for me to have a good friend with me who uh, I met about 20 years ago right here at Fort Mill Church of God. I had heard about him, and I'd been in services with him in different places and different venues, uh, but I had not ever had the chance to shake his hand personally, and uh, his ministry uh, has impacted my life in many ways and uh, I knew that if the opportunity would present itself one day that I would love to have him come and speak to you and then come back to speak to some of you who were here 20 years ago. You will remember possibly our evangelist uh, William Lee uh, speaking to us 
somewhere in 99, 2000, somewhere around there, and uh, sharing his ministry. And so it's a privilege to have him back tonight. I want to read a little bit about him and uh, just kind of give you an update because he's uh, been busy on the road and sharing in a lot of ministry over the last 20 years. And let me just kind of catch you up to speed with who he is and uh, what he's going to be sharing and uh, his ministry life over the past 15 to 20 years or so. He's a 1985 graduate of Lee University, Cleveland, Tennessee, with a Bachelor's of Biblical Studies with an emphasis on pastoral ministry. He has worked towards a Master of Divinity at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the Pentecostal Theological Center in Cleveland, Tennessee. He served as pastor in Providence, Rhode Island, Baltimore, Maryland, Daytona Beach, Florida, and the island of Bermuda. And I'm just going to stop there. And I noticed something, Bishop, that evidently it just was cold up there. And you moved to Bermuda <laughs> and said, I'm out of here. I'm leaving the Northeast and I'm not going where it's going to ever be chilly again. And you went to Bermuda and then you left there and pastored in Daytona Beach. His evangelistic ministry has reached out through the United States, Canada, the West Indies, Europe, South Africa, Singapore, India, the United Emirates, as well as Australia. He's also been a guest on Daystar Television and a keynote speaker at the General Assembly Church of God in 1998, which was in San Antonio, Texas. In 1998, Reverend Lee founded Lee Ministries International Incorporated and he serves as a mentor and a teacher for many young ministers in the kingdom of God. He is married to the former Sheila Renee Mabane of Washington, D.C. and together they are sold out to a life of servanthood. It's the vision of this ministry to continue to evangelize the world for the Lord Jesus Christ and to prepare the next generation to be effective and powerful citizens in the kingdom. In 2014, Reverend Lee authored and published All the King's Men, the Chronicles in the Life of King David. You'll have some material and some product out in the foyer at a table if you'd like to check out some of his material. I'm sure he would appreciate you stopping by. I want to say this and, and then I'll let us welcome him tonight. You have uh, with us tonight someone who has stepped away from pastoral ministry and is now back on the road full time, stepping into, into congregations and pulpits like this, doing his best to spread the gospel through evangelism around the world. And that's honorable. And I want to tell you why it's honorable. It's honorable on many fronts. But in a day when it might be a risk to be an evangelist again, this might be a risk. Revivals aren't as held as often as they used to be, and they aren't as attended as they used to be. And there's the risk of, of it not working out like he had hoped. But I'm telling you, there is a mantle of anointing on his life and on his wife as a team to share ministry. And in spite of what might be a new culture of evangelism, this is a voice that must be heard because the anointing is on his life and he's going to share with us today tonight tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening and by the end of this weekend you will say this this ministry has to not just survive but thrive and one of the ways you can do that is invest with me and Alora tonight and say i want to be a part of that because i may not get to go to canada the west indies to europe or south africa singapore or india some of these places but someone's willing to go. And what I can do is help make sure that they get to go and that the word continues to spread throughout the world. So I encourage you tonight as you prepare to give that you uh, think about how the Lord might want to use you and share in the ministry of William Lee. You're going to be blessed by his ministry. I would like for them to remain seated in his beautiful wife. We're so blessed to have you. Thank you for joining us. But would you stand across the room and give them a good Fort Mill welcome to the Fort Mill Church of God. Let them know you're glad they're here. Thank you so much. You can be seated. I'm going to pray for you and then the choir's going to come back. They're going to sing one more song, going to lead us in worship, and uh, they'll probably have you stand back up. Uh, so just join in and worship. There are lots of ways to give tonight. If you didn't come prepared to, to maybe give, you didn't write a check, but you know us. There's one way to heaven, but there's six ways to your wallet. So uh, join us in giving tonight. Uh, you say, Pastor, I'm not prepared. There's a kiosk even in the foyer. You can swipe your card. Debit card, we'll take it all. So uh, just partner with us. Let's make a difference for the kingdom of God. Let's pray together. 
Holy Spirit, come down. Move in a mighty way in our lives tonight as our speaker has been praying. We've been praying. We've been seeking your face. We've been expecting and anticipating this weekend. This is not just another weekend on the church calendar. No, this is a time where we seek your face for revival in our hearts. So, Lord, your people have been praying, and, Lord, I pray you answer them in a mighty way tonight. I pray for our speaker. I pray that you anoint his words and let the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon him. Give him clarity of thought so that he may communicate your truths to us this evening. And, Lord, as we invest in the kingdom of God, I know that you can take a little and make much, but what we want to do, we want to give you a a lot and let you make even more out of that. So tonight we present our gifts to you, believing you'll multiply it and it do great things for the kingdom of God through this ministry. Bless it, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you as you give.
milagroso, milagroso, abres camino, las promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. some worship. Just take a moment and love on him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. We lift our hands to say we love you tonight. And we adore you. Thank you for being our way maker. Promise keeper light in the darkness that's simply who you are tonight we lift our hands to adore you to bless you thank you dear God that you have called us into these meetings that you might speak to us 
we lift our hands in surrender and as a symbol to you that we are candidates for revival you said if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek your face turn from their wicked ways you've promised that you would hear from heaven you would forgive us of our sins and you would heal our land dear God we need forgiveness and we ask you to forgive us our land God needs healing we pray dear father for this nation we pray for those even in New York today God we pray that somehow some way you would reverse the decisions that have been made as of late we pray that you would touch mothers everywhere that you would convict dear father that these treacherous and wicked acts would not take place dear father we pray dear God that you would touch us as a people that you would remind us, dear Father, of who we are in you and that we would be active, dear Father, bringing the message of hope to this dying world. We pray, Father, that you would heal us of our division. Heal us, dear Father, of the hatred and the bigotry and the racism that continues to haunt our nation. We pray, Father, that revival would begin right here in us. And through us, God, you would use this moment and this hour to send a wave of fire and anointing across this nation and around the world that we might find healing. And now, God, we realize we have an appointment with your word today, Father. So we open our hearts that you might speak to us clearly and unmistakably and that your name would get glory and honor, Father. Let your word go forth. Let it accomplish what you sent it to do. And when it is done, we'll bow before you and give you glory. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said, amen. amen. Come on and put those hands together and bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you take your seats, turn to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, you look slimmer and younger since the last time I saw you. Hallelujah. Isn't God good tonight? Is anybody glad to be in church on a Saturday night giving him glory? Amen. Hallelujah. Thankful to God for this wonderful opportunity to be with you, to be back with you here at Fort Mill, and thank God for what God is doing among you. And it has been said that when God wants to curse a people, that he raises bad leadership. But when he wants to bless a people, even that he raises good leadership. And uh, I believe we ought to put our hands together for the leaders that God has blessed you with. Amen, Pastor Mark. Amen, Sister Laura, we appreciate you tonight. Bless you. Amen. Thank God for your vision and what God is doing in your life. And again, I'm just honored and privileged to have this opportunity uh, to share with you. Good to have my wife with me as well. Amen. Her first time being here. It's been a long time since I've been here. And I'm uh, thankful to God for what God is doing and continuing to do. And I'm just believing that the best is yet to come. Amen. Thank you again for your gifts. And may God continue to bless you. Amen. We entered into a new year. A little over 20 days ago and I believe that God wants to do something amazing and awesome with us and I believe that not only did we enter into a new year but I believe that we've entered into a new season amen and that God wants to launch us into something awesome and something great so if you have your Bibles tonight we want to go to the Word of God st. Luke chapter 5 a very familiar portion of Scripture tonight we're gonna look at verses 1 through 11 St. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Beginning at verse number 1. It reads, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. 
and entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. And nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were near the other ships, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. We want to focus our attention tonight on verse number four. It reads, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep. I want to use for a title tonight and speak to you on the subject, failure to launch. Failure to launch, or for a subtitle tonight, relaunch 2019. Turn to somebody and tell them God's about to relaunch you. In 2006, Paramount Pictures released the movie starring Matthew McConaughey and Sarah Jessica Parker, entitled Failure to Launch. Now this particular movie, it focused upon a man who is approaching his 40s, but he refuses to leave the comfortable nest of his parents' home. Well, in a desperate attempt to get him out on his own, his frustrated parents hired an extremely attractive girl of his dreams to give him the needed push to perhaps finally make a commitment and launch out on his own. Well, of course, in the end, the hired girlfriend ended up falling in love. There were hurt feelings, a mass of confusion, and finally, love prevailed, and they end up living happily ever after. Now, the storyline of this romantic comedy, it proved to be quite entertaining and even funny at times. But as funny and fictitious as it was, it is sad to say that there is a failure to launch that is taking place in the lives of many believers who are failing to launch out and be everything that God has called us to be. It would seem as though throughout the body of Christ, there appears to be too many believers who are satisfied. Satisfied with standing on the shores of their destiny, watching the big ship sail the places that they themselves ought to be sailing. There are believers who appear to be content with wading in the waters of mediocrity, unwilling and uninterested, and launching out into the deep waters of excellence. There are so-called people of faith whose lack of faith has limited them to standing on the dots and the launching pads of life, never moving forward and venturing into the deep waters of abundant living. And they sit in our churches and they are filling our pews and they are saved, sour, and satisfied. They fail to launch out, never strategizing and, uh, and, and having a vision of something better, never moving from where they are, all while missing out on the deep level of blessings that God has in store for them. So they sit in a state of emotional, spiritual, and even physical paralysis, all while God is constantly tugging at their hearts, urging them in their spirit, and even shouting at them to position themselves for a relaunch. Now understand that engaging in a relaunch is a difficult thing because when we decide to engage in a relaunch, it requires that we gain the courage to start over again. And whether we want to admit it or not, 
Starting over again is never an easy prospect. You see, when we decide to start over again, it is there that we find ourselves wrestling with the ghosts of past failures along with his good friends' fear and embarrassment. It is there that we find ourselves struggling with the, tempt with, the end, uh, with the temptation to be intimidated by the prospect of trying again only to possibly fail again, stepping out only to be disappointed. So rather than taking a chance on trying again, many of us would rather reside in the safe house that resides on the corner of Do Nothing Avenue and Paralysis Drive. You see, because when we are in that safe house, we no longer have to deal with the intimidation and the prospect of possibly falling one more time. We no longer have to rehearse our past failures. We no longer have to deal with what we went through yesterday. Amen. But what we've got to understand is that the God that we serve will never allow us to remain in that place. You see, because God will never allow us to live ordinary lives. Turn to somebody and tell them you're more than an ordinary person. That's right, you're more than an ordinary person. You see, God has invested in each and every one of us, so therefore he requires that we move beyond the ordinary, that we move beyond the mundane, that our lives be dynamic, that our lives have impact. So when we find ourselves trying to play it safe, what God will do is God will shake us, he will convict us, he'll bother us, he'll haunt us in the daytime and wake us up at night until we decide that I have had enough I'm going to rise up in the name of Jesus and in 2019, I am going to engage in a relaunch. Somebody shout praise the Lord in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that would be the divine will of the master. As we come to our text here located in the gospel according to St. Luke, Jesus is now at the beginning of his public ministry. And he finds himself preaching the word of God by the shores of Lake Gennesaret. Now the impact of his ministry is already seen here as the Bible says the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. So after preaching in this dynamic crusade, Jesus then would turn to address a group of fishermen who found themselves surrounded by all of the ingredients that normally result in a failure to launch. They had been out fishing all day and they had no success for the Bible says they caught nothing. And Jesus would walk into their discouragement, walk into their depression and challenge them. He said, fellas, I want you to engage in a relaunch. In other words, he says, launch out into the deep. We wanna take a look at our text tonight and I want to share with you three things that I believe that God would want to say to us tonight that is going to position us for the next relaunch into this new year and help us to avoid a failure to launch. The first thing that I believe, number one, that must be present if we're going to engage in a relaunch, number one, is we must restore our passion. Somebody say that word, passion. Passion. Passion is an extremely powerful word, an extremely powerful force. As a matter of fact, let me say this, that passion is such a powerful force that it actually can serve to determine our success and our failure in anything in life. As a matter of fact, a person that has a passion for what they do, that individual can oftentimes overcome handicaps, limitations, and even disadvantages, and watch this, that can actually outperform somebody who may have more talent, who may have more opportunity, and may have more ability, but does not have the passion that that other person has. As a matter of fact, if you are here and you are seeking the will of God in your life, one of the questions that you can ask yourself is, what am I passionate about? Turn to somebody and ask them, what are you passionate about? That is, what is that thing that burns in your belly? What is that area of injustice that really, really makes you angry? What is that thing that you simply must do and cannot live without doing? What is that thing that you would do even if you were not getting paid for it? 
What are you passionate about? Because I found out that God is so wise that oftentimes he will intertwine our passion with our destiny. Glory to God. So what we've got to do if we're going to walk in the will of God, we got to find that thing that really burns down in my belly. Hallelujah. That thing that really lights us on fire. That thing that we simply must do. What are we passionate about? Because I believe that in these last days that God is looking to use some people that have passion. I'm not talking about the people that you have to pump and prime and wave pom-poms in order to get them to do anything. But I'm talking about that person that has a made-up mind that I'm so passionate about this thing that nothing is going to stand in my way. Glory to God. I got a passion for worship. I got a passion for service. I got a passion for living for God. I got a passion for witness. I got a passion for ministry. Glory to God. I got a passion for God. Somebody shout hallelujah glory to God turn to somebody and tell them I've got passion that's right that's why I'm here on a Saturday night giving him glory and giving him honor because I have a passion for God and when we come to our text here what we are looking at is a group of fishermen who lost their passion Look at verses 1 and 2. It says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them. So when Jesus shows up on the scene, these fishermen who had been out there fishing all night became so discouraged, became so despondent that they had literally gotten up and walked out of their place of purpose. Now Jesus later on would call them to a higher place of purpose. But at this moment, they were supposed to be fishermen in the ship doing what fishermen do. But they had become so discouraged they had become so disgusted by their lack of success that they had literally gotten up and walked out of their place of purpose. And understand that whenever you take anything or anybody out of their place of purpose, death and decline is going to be imminent. Can I show you what I'm talking about? Take a bird out of the sky, its place of purpose. It may creep around on the ground for a few days, but eventually a predator is going to get a hold of it and it is going to die. Take a plant out of the ground, this place of purpose. It may sit on the mantle and look pretty for a few days, but eventually its leaves are going to shrivel up and it is going to die. Take a fish out of the water, its place of purpose. It'll flap around on the shore for just a few moments, but eventually its gills are going to dry up and it is going to die. Take a man or a woman out of God. Mm their place of purpose. They may make a few friends, they may build a nice house, but eventually they are going to die. Because whenever you take something or somebody out of their place of purpose, death is going to be the result. And I need to say that to somebody because there are some in the house right now who are once functioning in their place of purpose. We were walking in a place of obedience and doing what God had gifted us and what God had called us to do. But maybe somebody calls us to get offended. Maybe somebody hurt our feelings. Maybe we are experiencing a season of frustration and we got up and walked out of our place without realizing that the devil fooled us and moved us out of our place of blessings. But I come back to tell the devil tonight in the name of Jesus that somebody is about to rise up and get back in their place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you turn to somebody and tell them get back in your place. Get back in your place. Glory to God. Your blessings are in your place. Your miracle are, is in your place. Your deliverance is in your place. Your provision is in your place. Your anointing is in your place. Glory to God. God wants to bless somebody, but you got to make up in your mind that I've had enough of sitting on the sidelines. I'm rising up in the name of Jesus, and I'm getting back in my place. 
Somebody just lift your hands right now and just give him some worship right now. Glory to God. Get back in your place. Hallelujah. The things that we pray for, we cannot receive until we find ourselves back in our place. But watch this. Because the Bible did not just say that they left their place of purpose or they left their ship. But it also says that they were washing their nets. You see the washing of the nets. It was actually the final act that the fishermen would engage in to symbolize that their day was over. So when Jesus showed up, these fishermen had basically given up. They had thrown in the towel. They were waving the white flag. They had mailed it in. The opera lights had now dimmed and the fat lady was on center stage and was now in the final chorus of her song. It was over. You know something? There are some folk here tonight who went through so much in 2018 and you're sitting in church but people have no idea but you're washing your nets. Saying all the right stuff going through all the motions, clapping your hands, singing in the choir, even on the praise team. But behind the scenes, you're washing your nets. Getting up in the morning, the sound of the alarm, getting dressed, giving courtesy kisses on the way out the door after breakfast smiling and going through the motions but the family has no idea but daddy is washing his nets taking the kids from soccer practice to basketball practice to dance practice running around cleaning the house and taking care of everything cooking the meals bringing home the bacon and frying up in the pan as they used to say smiling and acting like everything is great but the family has no idea. But mother is washing her nets. Teaching lessons, tutoring students, attending parent and teacher conferences, teaching lessons, staying after school late. But the principal has no idea, but the teacher is washing her nets. Planning attending conferences, casting vision, having business meetings, but the company has no clue, but the manager or the CEO is washing his nets. Preaching sermons, teaching classes, laying hands on sick folk, running from hospital to hospital, administrating, casting vision, but the congregation has no idea. But even the man of God is washing his nets. We have a lot of folk in the church going through all of the motions, acting as though they are alive, saying all the right things, but behind the scenes, they're washing their nets. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of people in the church that are kind of like Sarah in the Old Testament. Yeah. Y'all y'all remember Sarah? Yeah. You know how God had given Abraham a promise that he was going to have a child through her? And God waited until Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90. And Hebrews said that Abraham's body was dead and Sarah's womb was shut. And one day, old Abraham is having prayer meeting and you know, Sarah's kind of eavesdropping, you know, she got the phone up on the other end and is listening in and, and she overhears God 
repeat to Abraham that he was going to have a son through her at 90. And do y'all remember what Sarah did? Yeah, she laughed. But listen, it wasn't the kind of laugh like when you hear a good joke. It was kind of like a sarcastic kind of laugh. Kind of like, yeah, right, kind of laugh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. What happened to Sarah is what has happened to many of us, even under the sound of my voice. You see, what happened to Sarah is that she had been in the waiting room so long that the devil convinced her that because it did not happen yet, that it was not going to happen. And there are some of you right now, you got a word from God and a promise from God. God spoke to you in church, spoke to you in your prayer meeting, and you have been uh, in the waiting room for so long that the devil has told you that it's too late, that it's not going to happen. I come by to tell you the devil is a liar tonight. Glory to God. If God said that it's going to happen, it is going to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you turn to somebody and encourage them, tell them, hang in there, it's going to happen. Hallelujah. The promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe. If God gave you the promise, he is faithful to the promise, and he will bring it to pass. It's going to happen. But watch this. Because the Bible didn't just say that she laughed, but it actually said that Sarah laughed within herself. It was an inner laugh. Nobody heard her. Old Abraham thought she was still in the, with the program. <laughs> you know, he would walk in the room and say, you know, we're going to have that baby. She said, praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> then he'd walk out the room and she'd go, yeah, right. <laughs> She had gone to sleep on the inside and nobody even knew it. She was smiling, going through the, all, the, all the motions, you know, talking all the church language. Praise the Lord, I'm blessed and highly favored. Glory to God. She had all the Bibles from TBN, you know, and the, and the pens and, you know, the fish on the car, you know, saying all the right stuff, quoting the scripture, going through all the motions. But deep down inside, her hope had died. Her vision had died. The twinkle had left her eyes. The bounce was no longer in her step. And she was just going through the motions. My God. Nobody heard her laughing. Her and her girls going out to Babies R Us buying stuff and preparing the room and going through all of the motions, saying all the right stuff. But deep down on the inside, there was an inner laugh that nobody around her heard. Her husband did not hear her laughing. Her friends did not hear her laughing. The servants at the house did not hear her laughing. But can I tell you who heard her laughing? God heard her laughing and he leaned over the portals of heaven and said you go ahead and laugh old lady but the last laugh is going to be on you. Glory to God. The next time I hear about Sarah laughing she is holding the baby Isaac in her arms and saying the Lord has made me to laugh. Glory to God and I believe that by the time somebody walks out of this house tonight, glory to God, you're going to walk out with the baby in your arms saying God has restored my joy. God has given me a new song. Weeping has endured for the night, but joy is come in the morning. Somebody give him a praise in this house. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on and give him a praise right now. You are going to laugh again. <laughs> Somebody's about to get your passion back. Glory to God. God's about to relight a fire in you. Hallelujah. That's going to turn your life around. That's going to turn your ministry around. You've been washing your nets, but God is saying it is not over. It's time to cast those nets back in the water one more time in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we must restore our passion. But then there's a second thing that we must do. Not only must we restore our passion, but number two, we must rebuke the spirit 
of failure. Rebuke the spirit of failure. Can I ask y'all a question tonight? Anybody in here ever fail? <laughs> a few of y'all didn't raise your hand, so either. So I figure you were either just born yesterday <laughs> or you just sitting up here in revival. I won't say you're lying. I'll say you're having a strained relationship with the truth. <laughs> because listen, no matter who we are, how blessed we are, how successful we are, all of us experience failure. And I believe that we in the church need to kind of change our language and even our posture when it comes to the issue of feeling. Because what has happened in the church world is oftentimes we have somewhat communicated to people that if you get anointed enough, or you have enough faith, or if you pray enough, or draw close to God and his word enough that it will exempt you from going through failure. But listen, I don't care who you are. All of us have failed and will fail. So what we got in the church because of that mentality is we got a lot of folk walking around the church, you know, doing what we call in the hood fronting. You know. Going around trying to act like you know, we, we just never fail. You know, we just got it all together. You know, praise the Lord. Look at me. I'm the successful businessman. My portfolio has just been wonderful. All of my programs and my money has just been great. I've never lost an investment. Praise the Lord. Look at me. I'm the perfect student. I have a 4.5 GPA. And... Uh, I never failed an exam. Everything has just been great. All my teachers love me. Praise the Lord. Look at my family. Glory to God. Amen. We're the Bradys and the Huxtables, you know, 2.5 children, a white picket fence, a beautiful house, and everything is great. Never have a day of arguing or any stress in the house. Everything. Come on now. Turn to somebody and tell them, let's get real. Because the truth is, we all fail and listen if you have failed lately do two things first of all learn the lesson that God intends for you to learn through this failure humble yourself and learn what God is teaching then the second thing put it behind you turn to somebody tell them put it behind you that's right. Stop rehearsing it. Stop allowing the devil to use it to beat you upside the head and make you feel guilty and, and, and ruin your self-image. Listen, put it behind you. But here is what I do want you to be concerned about. Make sure that although we all fail, that we do not take on the spirit of failure. And there's a difference. Because although all of us fail, we do not take on the spirit of failure until we decide that because we fail that we're going to simply sit there, fold our arms, and never try again. Again, the truth is that all of us fail, but someone has said that the difference between average people and achieving people is their perception of and their response to failure. Achieving people realize that failing does not make you a failure. Turn to somebody and tell them I may have failed, but I'm not a failure. Oliver Goldsmith has said that success consists of getting up one more time than you fall. Someone else has said that a big shot is just a little shot that kept on shooting. Amen. Glory to God. So no matter how many times you fail, make up your mind that you're going to get up and try one more time. Listen to what Jesus said to Peter in Luke 22. I believe verse 33. Listen to what he said. He says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan desires to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But he said, listen, Peter, I have prayed for you. And notice what he prayed. He didn't pray that Simon Peter would not fail. 
As a matter of fact, he already knew you're going to fail. So listen, Peter, before the cock crows three times, you're going to fall on your face and deny that you even know me. So I already know that you're going to fail. He said, but what I'm praying, Simon, is not that you won't fail, but I'm praying that your faith will not fail. So in other words, he says, listen, I'm praying for you in such a manner that even when you fall flat on your face, even when you are down for the count, that something called your faith is going to kick in and say, I may be down, but I still believe. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I still believe. Glory to God, I still believe. I may have failed, but I still believe. I may have fallen on my face, but I still believe. Devil, you should have killed me when you got a chance because now my faith is kicked in and I still believe. And as long as I believe that God is sitting on the throne, he is able to turn my situation around. Somebody shout, I still believe. And Simon, here in our text, and these fishermen are surrounded by the spirit of failure. You say, how do I know? I know because of the way that they respond when Jesus challenges them. Jesus walks up to them and says, hey, fellas, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. And what does Simon say? He says, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. In other words, he said, look, man, you just got here. And you're going to just roll up in here talking about launching out into the deep. <laughs> he said, we've been out here all night and we haven't caught a thing. Can I ask y'all a question? I know everybody in here is a, you know, anointed and appointed and all that stuff, but let me ask you, has, has anybody in here ever toiled in something so long that you reached a point in which you got so frustrated that you didn't even want to hear anybody try to encourage you? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You didn't want to hear another church cliche. You didn't want to hear another scripture. I mean, we're, we're preachers. We already know the word out. And you most certainly didn't want to hear from the parking lot prophet with another word from the Lord. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I mean, they already gave you five prophecies and only two and a half have come to pass. So you're trying to figure out whether they're prophesying or prophet lying. <laughs> And you see their name come up on the caller ID, you just say, no, I ain't going to be bothered with this today. Don't call me. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's where Peter is. He is so frustrated with his lack of success, his failure through the night, that when Jesus challenges him, he just said, look, we've been out here all night, and we haven't caught a thing. He said, besides... You're a carpenter. <laughs> I'm a fisherman. And based on what you're telling me, I can tell you don't know what you're talking about. First of all, it's too late. <laughs> How many fishermen do I have in the house? Anybody? Uh, well, I'm not a fisherman either. And one of the reasons why is because I understand that in order to catch good fish, you got to get up real early in the morning, right? But now the sun has come up and Jesus is showing up saying, hey, launch out. And Peter's saying, look, man, it's too late. But how many of you know that when Jesus shows up? Hallelujah. It's never too late. Glory to God. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on time God. Turn to somebody and tell him he's an on time God. But he said, listen, not only are you too late, but you're telling us to launch out into the deep. And everybody knows that the good fish are in the medium to shallow water. 
But what Peter did not realize is that Jesus is now calling him to catch big fish. And big fish are only in the deep waters. Hallelujah. So he, but then all of a sudden, the spirit of failure is overcome by faith. Because all of a sudden, Peter's faith kicked in. And listen to what he said. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will launch out into the deep. Oh, glory to God. Can somebody shout, nevertheless? Oh my God, I believe that God's about to release some nevertheless faith in somebody's life in 2019. Glory to God, you've been praying and believing God and it looks like nothing is going to come to pass. But right now, your faith is kicking in and saying, nevertheless, I'm going to keep on believing God. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on fasting. Nevertheless, I don't know how you're going to do it, but because you told me, I'm going to keep on doing what you told me to do and believing that you shall bring it to pass hallelujah glory to God one more time shout nevertheless my son's not saved yet but nevertheless I'm going to keep on praying shout nevertheless hallelujah I don't have the job yet but nevertheless I'm going to keep on believing hallelujah my daughter's still astray but nevertheless I'm going to hang on to the horns of the altar until God gives us the breakthrough nevertheless <laughs> hallelujah glory to God just lift your hands one more time and just give him some worship right now Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So make up your mind that you're going to try again and rebuke that spirit of failure. And then the third and final thing, not only must we restore our passion, not only must we rebuke the spirit of failure, but thirdly and lastly, we must raise our level of expectation. Hallelujah. Would you turn to somebody near you real quick and tell them I'm expecting. Hallelujah. Amen. Now if you're sitting next to your husband or wife, I'm just talking spiritually here. <laughs> There's a brother in the back just passed out there. Somebody send the, send the nursing team back there and help a brother out. <laughs> but I'm talking spiritually. Someone has said that the spirit of expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And when we expect God to do something awesome, God is the kind of God who does not disappoint. Is anybody expecting something big from God? Hallelujah. How many of you in here are blessed tonight? All right. Can I help you understand something about that blessing? Listen, when God decided to bless you, he had more than you in mind. He blesses us that we might be a blessing to other people. He wants us to be a blessing to everybody that we are connected to. A blessing to our family, a blessing to our church, a blessing to our friends, a blessing to those, amen, that he brings into our lives. Amen, God blesses us to be a blessing. And listen, that is the problem that I have with a lot of the prosperity preaching that I'm hearing. The problem that I have is not that I don't believe that God wants us to prosper. The problem that I have is the mindset behind our desire to be blessed. You see, a lot of folk are praying for prosperity with the mindset of a receptacle. But God says, no, I don't want you to pray with that mentality. I want you to be a conduit. Because I don't just want to get it to you. I want to get it through you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to bless you so you can be a blessing to everybody around you. So, if we are going to be that kind of blessing, we must pray the kind of prayers and walk in the kind of faith so that God can bless us in such a manner 
that when we reach out to bless somebody else, that we'll be so blessed that we'll not even miss it. Y'all hear me? Anybody want to be blessed like that? Yeah. Listen, if you're going to construct a vision for your life, don't construct the kind of vision that you can complete in your own lifetime. Don't construct the kind of vision that you can do on your own. But the real kind of vision that God gives, amen, is so big that if God doesn't step in and get it done, it will not be done. The kind of vision that God gives is so awesome that it affects your generation and generations after you. Glory to God. We serve a big God. So expect something big. Dream of big things and, and pray big prayers. Believe God to answer big things. Hallelujah. He is a big God and he is able. Hallelujah. Amen. Have a big God, type, a big God concept. Amen. And believe God and raise your level of expectation. And here in our text is an example of God blessing somebody beyond their level of expectation. Let me show you. Jesus comes to Peter, and in verse 4, he says, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets, plural, for a draw. Right? Simon's frustrated. He got an attitude. He said, look, man, we've been out here all night long. We have not taken anything. But then his faith kicked in, but not at the level that Jesus wanted it. Because notice what Simon said. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Singular. Jesus has a plural net blessing for Peter. But Peter only has singular net faith. Can I tell somebody tonight for what God is about to do in your life and for 2019 you need to get ready hallelujah and go down to the store and get yourself some more nets hallelujah glory to God would you turn to somebody and tell them you're going to need some more nets. Hallelujah, because he's about to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Glory to God. I know what he did yesterday, but I come by to tell the church here in Fort Mill, get ready. You're going to need some more nets. Hallelujah. God is about to bless, press down, shaking together, and running over. But because old Peter only had singular net faith. He threw out that one net into the water. And there they are, standing and waiting to see what was going to happen. And you know, Pastor, when I looked at this, I wondered, after they had been out there all night and caught nothing, how was it that Jesus was able to all of a sudden get all those fish into that net and then my imagination started going and it brought me back to the days when I was a kid and used to watch cartoons anybody in here used to watch cartoons uh, anybody in here still watch okay <laughs> but you know <laughs> back when I was growing up it was the pre-cable era anybody know what I'm talking about you know, they didn't have the Cartoon Network and all of that. You know, anybody remember back in the day when, you know, we had like three channels? Four if you were really, really fortunate. You know, and we had those little rabbit ears on the TV. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Those, uh, and then when the rabbit ear antenna broke, you know, you would put some aluminum foil, you know, or a hanger. Anybody know, know, what, I, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, this was like before the remote as well. Anybody? Yeah, anybody? Before the, you were the remote? Yeah. <laughs> We'd be outside playing. You know, Dad'd be like, Bill, get in here! I come walking in there, running across the field, up the stairs, all through the house, get to the pastor, go turn the channel to channel three. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all remember like when the handle on the TV would break? 
and you have the pliers like sitting on the side, you know. <laughs> First time I saw the pliers in the toolbox, I was like, why do you have the tent channel changer out here in the... In the <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> or like, he'd call you in the room and you'd have to stand in a certain spot for 30 minutes while the football game was on because if you moved, you just, you, anybody, okay, y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I thought that only happened in the hood, but I'm finding out that, you know, that happened. <laughs> but back in the day, they had a cartoon on Saturday morning called the Super Friends. Anybody remember the Super Friends? With Batman and Robin and Wonder Woman and the Wonder Twins and Green Lantern and all of them, but there was one character that reminded me that I was reminded of part of when I was looking at this text. And that was that brother with the orange suit on and the green fins. The one that they just made a movie about called Aquaman. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, Aquaman possessed a certain ability where he was able to speak to anything that was in the water. As a matter of fact, they called him the king of the sea. So when Aquaman needed the, the creatures in the sea to do something, he would send telepathic messages to them and speak to them. So when he wanted well, he would call for the well to come, you know, and they would come and line up and they would block the water from going and destroying the city. When he needed a school of fish or some octopus, he would just send signals to them. And whatever he told them to do, that is what they did. Hallelujah. And I got to looking at this text, Bishop, and I realized that the man standing on that boat that day was greater than Aquaman, and his name was Jesus. Glory to God. He is not only the king of the water, but he is the king of glory, the king of the earth, the king of the universe, the king of kings. Glory to God. So I imagine that as he was standing there on that boat and they were looking around waiting to see what was going to happen that he began to signal to those fish and began to call them by their name. Glory to God. He said, Porgy, whiting, catfish, salmon, bluefish, hake, blue heron, halibut, blowfish, tilapia, grouper, goldfish, tuna fish, swordfish, fried fish, baked fish, every other fish that is your master calling you and I command you to jump into that net. Get ready, get ready pastor. God is speaking to the fish all over Fort Mill, South Carolina. Glory to God, he is speaking to black fish, white fish, yellow fish, red fish, rich fish, poor fish. Get ready, he's about to fill the house. He is speaking to the fish. Now is not the time to back up. I come out to tell the church tonight, get ready. We're going to need some more nets. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody. Tell them let's get some more nets. So watch what happened. Because they only had singular net faith. They didn't receive the plural net blessing. So they began to pull the net out of the water. And the Bible says the net began to break. Glory to God, get ready, because he's about to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, we're about to reap a great harvest, and we're going to need some more nets. Glory to God. Stand to your feet with me. So watch, watch the relaunch. Peter realizes what has happened and he realizes who he is standing in front of. He humbles himself, bows before him and Jesus turns to Peter and said, hey, Peter, I like you. I like your style. I like the fact that when I blessed you, you reached out to other little ships and told them to come over. They filled up their ships also and they began to sink. That mentality is the mentality I can use on my team. 
So he said, Peter, I'm about to relaunch you. I'm going to reinvent you. I'm going to remake you. He said, Peter, if it weren't for this moment, you would have gone down in history as just another fisherman. He said, but that's not how it's going to happen. I'm changing your destiny. I'm changing the plan for your life. He says, Peter, from this day forward, you're not going to just be another fisherman, but you're going to be a fisher of men. So instead of going down in history as just another fisherman, Peter went down in history as one of the greatest apostles to ever grace the church. I come by to tell somebody tonight, 2019 is your year for relaunch. I don't know what frustrations you experienced. I don't know what you've been through, but God says I want to restore your passion. I want to rebuke the spirit of failure and give you the courage to try again. And then I want you to expect me to move on your behalf. Lift those hands all over this house. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, God, for bringing us to this place. You've heard the prayers of your people. You know the frustrations that we've experienced in 2018. You know how the devil has been fighting to quench that fire, to steal that zeal, to rob us of our passion. But I declare a relaunch all over this house tonight. God, put the song back in somebody's spirit. Put the twinkle back in somebody's eyes. Put the bounce back in somebody's step. Call somebody to rise up and return to their place that you have called them to. And anoint them now for such a time as this. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing right now. God, we dare to stop washing our nets and to cast them out one more time. Lord, renew us today. You said to that church in Revelation, you said you know their good works, you know how they hate sin, but you said you had something against them, that is that they had left their first love. In other words, you said that they didn't love you like they used to. So God, restore that passion. The passion for you. God, somebody tonight has experienced failure lately and the enemy has been daring them to try again. I come against the spirit of fear right now. I release power. I release love. I release soundness of mind. I release the courage to try one more time. In the name of Jesus, touch my brother, touch my sister tonight, God launch them out and now God we're expecting you to hear us tonight we're expecting you to move father we're expecting you to have your way God thank you for what you're doing right now thank you God that our best days are ahead of us thank you father change destinies tonight lose somebody tonight and release them God into a great future. We thank you in Jesus' name. With every eye closed, every head bowed tonight. Somebody here would say, Preacher, I'm here tonight, I've, but I got to confess, I'm just going through the motions. I left my place of purpose tonight. I want to return. I've been washing my nets. Tonight, I want to make up a decision that it's time for me to launch out again. I need my passion back. I remember I used to worship him with fervency. I remember when I had that fire burning in me, I had that zeal. And tonight, I want my passion back. Would you lift your hand up so I can pray for you? Yes, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. 
somebody tonight you may have failed lately and the enemy's been beating you over the head with it and daring you to try again and tonight you are going to rebuke that spirit of failure and you've made up your mind that it is not over till God says it's over if I'm talking to you lift your hands up God wants to give you some courage and some strength to try yes I see hands yes you who lifted those hands for any of those, I want you to, with the spirit of expectation, to make your way to this altar tonight. The Holy Spirit is about to renew you and relaunch you. Somebody would say to me, preacher, I need some triple net, I need some multi-net blessings in my life. I have a special need. I want you to make your way to this altar tonight. Thank you, Lord. Tonight is your night. Step out. That's right. Step out. Step out. It's not over. God wants to break the spirit of depression tonight that has been hovering over some of you as you walked into this new year. Tonight is your night. Chains are about to be broken and yokes are about to be restored. Are about to be, uh, chains are about to be broken. Yokes are about to be destroyed. Step out tonight. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Come on, prayer team, and help me tonight. Come and stand with me tonight and stand behind these. Lay your hands on them. And believe God, tonight is your night for a relaunch. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. I'm going to believe God for great things. I'm going to try again. I'm expecting him to move on my behalf. I'm expecting him to heal. I'm expecting him to deliver. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Begin to reach out all over this altar. That's right. Begin to call upon him. Walking around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do it tonight, God. Do it tonight, Father. Do it tonight. Touch your sons. Touch your daughters. In the name of Jesus. Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hand. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Hey! 
hands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in, still in your hands. This is, this, this is, is my confidence. You never see your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. reoccurring theme in my prayers as I would lay hands on people I would sense that the Lord was wanting to relieve us of this spirit of heaviness that keeps us from launching this spirit of heaviness that keeps us from feeling courage and and feeling like a failure that heaviness that the enemy tries to put over us it says it's over or uh, no need to try the hour has passed wow 
That spirit of heaviness is removed with the garment of praise. Will you just lift your hands across this room with a shout of victory and the shout of praise deep from your soul. Hallelujah! We thank you, Lord, that the spirit of heaviness, you give us a garment of praise. Hallelujah! And instead of saying under the spirit of heaviness, you will lift us to new places in heavenly realms because of the praise that we give to you. Come on, lift your voices. Hallelujah. 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 Sing it. I've seen it move. Come on, sing it. Lift your voices. Come on. Give it praise. That's the spirit of praise. to do something this kind of just dropped in my spirit when you were preaching and Pastor Mike my staff you guys help me with this sometime next week run over to Cabela's and let's get some nets and let's lay them on this stage let's put these instead of putting this box away let's put those needs in those nets but believing that there's going to be an abundant provision for every need that we have requested. I, I know it may not look pretty online and it might not be aesthetically what we need for the stage, for pictures, and for what we like to post online. But I'm way past that. If God will move a mountain and, and break the nets, where we have prayed and we have labored and we have said we have never the less faith. Oh, I'm ready for seeing some nets be broken. So get us, let's get some nets next week. And let's lay them on this stage and let's fill them with prayer cards and say, God, you're going to do abundant things this year. Provisions beyond that which we've ever seen before. Hallelujah. That's a visual that will stick with us and remind us God's not finished yet. Hallelujah. And here's what, man, I hate you preach so good because I feel like I don't need to do anymore because, but I want to say one more thing. Remember, revival will be in the morning and then tomorrow night as well. And it may feel like the hour has passed for your breakthrough. But those nets are going to remind us, God will believe you'll do it again going to be the reminder to us and so I am so thankful for the word of the Lord that has just grabbed my heart hallelujah hallelujah I know that to give a weekend takes sacrifice to give your weekend it takes sacrifice you being here tonight you had to give up something you said no to something so you could say yes to this and so by being here, you said, I'm ready for what God wants to say and do in my life. And I just want to say, 
thank you for that kind of faith and that kind of commitment that says, I want to see what God's doing and what he wants to say. Tomorrow morning at 8.30 and then again at 11, there'll be two services then and just like normal. And then tomorrow night at 6. And these are opportunities for this type of move of God in our hearts that we all need. I sat there tonight on the edge of my seat. If you ever think that we don't need this, you're wrong. We need it, every one of us. I've told my staff, get in the altar, pray, seek God. Let it be for us too. We need it. So I encourage you to be here and invite someone. Thank you, Bishop, for a wonderful word from the Lord. Will you honor the man of God for the word of the Lord he shared with us tonight? Thank you. Thank you so much. One last thing. I don't know if you've caught it, but sitting behind me tonight were several rows of our, rows of our young people. They're hungry, they're thirsty. Be encouragements to them. Encourage our students and our children when they're seeking the Lord. I want you to lay hands on them, encourage them, and, and uh, tell them to stay hungry for God. They could have been a lot of places tonight, but they're in the house of God. And I applaud you kids and you students. I'm proud of you as your pastor and just thankful that you're in these altars seeking God. He's got a big plan for your life. Stay hungry, stay thirsty. Let's pray. Lord, your word is powerful and strong. It's mighty. You're speaking to us. You're imparting words to us this evening. And we give you praise for that. I pray, Lord, tonight that as we prepare to wrap up this evening, that your word would speak to us and go with us beyond this moment. Let it keep us throughout this week. Challenge us as we continue and go on our way. I pray according to Psalm 139 and 5 that you go before us and you follow us. You place your hand of blessing on our head in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you disperse on the screen, if you're visiting with us tonight and you'd like more information about our church, you can text at Fort Mill 3 to 81010. If tonight you made a decision to follow Christ, you can text as well at Fort Mill Family 2. 81010. You will receive correspondence from our church and we'll connect with you and help you along the journey. We want to walk with you. God bless you as you go tonight. If you're a guest, we'd love to meet you and greet you as well. Have a great evening. Stop by the bishop's table on your way out.